Okay, this is the Wi-Fi bridge. It's made by Vonex. As you can see, it's got two cables on it. One of them is to connect to the LAN connection of whatever you want to make wireless. The other one only gives power. It's a USB um, slot on here. You can split it here and you can get power that way, or you can power it here. But you should never apply power here whilst you've got it connected to anything else by the, by the USB, so don't ever do that. Now I have set this one up, but I'm gonna show you how um, it gets set up again, because um, some people have difficulty with this. So first of all, I'm going to um, press this reset button and hold it. And the purpose of that is to take out all the data that's already been saved in this, in this unit, because I wanna show you what you'll find when you get your new um, Vonet um, unit. Now pressing it that long should take it out. Um, this is my laptop. I think I've already turned off the Wi-Fi. So my Wi-Fi is off on here. It may not be the same on yours, but you need to turn off um, your Wi-Fi just to make it much easier for yourself. Now, it's trying to identify the Vonex unit. Now, this can take a bit of time, and if it does, we'll just simply edit the video. But I'll te keep talking anyway. Now, it's important when you um, try to communicate with the Vonex device, you must use Internet Explorer. Um, I've tried this with Firefox, I've tried it with, with Google Chrome, I didn't realise why it wasn't working. I went back to the manufacturer's website and they talked about um, uh, Internet Explorer. I didn't think that would make any difference whatsoever, but in fact, if you don't use Internet Explorer, it simply doesn't work. Now on the unit itself, it tells you to put um, a URL in. And this what this actually does is it, it links the computer to a browser in the device itself. Now I've already put the URL in, it's on the back of the device when you get it, http colon forward slash forward slash um, vonets.config. In fact I'll get rid of the www that's, that's showing on there, so I'm trying to use my mouse from the other computer. Right, so we'll get rid of that, I'll probably just put it back in anyway. And I'm going to hit return. Now, I've done this a few times, sometimes it works straight away, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes I have to give the device a bit longer. I've even had to unplug the device from time to time, it's, it seems like it's not going to play ball. I'm going to unplug the device. Um, while we're waiting for that to happen then, I want to show you a Triple Dragon. Now, one of the reasons that we sell this product is because um, a number of people, um, seeing some of the more modern receivers coming on the market, um, have said, you know, can we use the Triple Dragon wirelessly? And the answer is yes, with the Vonet you can. Now, um, the Triple Dragon was originally designed to be connected to a couple of other boxes. And so there's this interface plate at the back, which is really, you don't need it. When you want to fit a hard drive, you take this off and this fits into an IDE drive with a, a power lead, which I don't know if Joseph wants to just show you there over the top, there's, there's the power cable that you can see that's not connected at the moment. And what we now usually fit is something like this, which is the SATA to IDE converter. And this takes the two connectors that you see there, that one and the one for the power, and that will then slot into a SATA drive, which is the more modern. Now this cable here provides power to the board at the back. This is not switched on. Um, you'll notice, before I take the socket out, if you can, Joe, if you can get in close on that, you'll notice there's a red cable at the front and a black cable at the back. So the red is towards the front of the machine. That's important because that's the power, the way the power is set up. Now I'm going to take this interface off, just like that. It's actually got um, uh, about six well, potential for six pins, there's five there, there's four together and one at the back. Don't worry about the one at the back. Um, I've now got a device like this which provides me with a USB, which is what we want for the Vonet device. And once again, we've got coloured cables, red, red here, black here. So just like we had it now, we put the red at the front on the, fourth, on the most front pin there, push it down, if you can see that now, that will now, when that's powered up, that will give us USB power so we can put the Vonet device inside the receiver once it's set up 
or we can have it coming out the back. And then of course you've got your LAN connection, which at the moment is not connected to anything, is here. And, if, and when, we, when we put the Vonet device on, then that will be connected to there. So we'll come back to this now, and as you can see, while we've, not, while we've been talking, in fact, it's found the web browser. So this is the screen that you're, you're presented with, having put in your HTTP code, forward slash, forward slash, vonets.config, and the, pass, the login and password are the same word, simply admin. Admin, I've, it's, my computer saved it, but I'll, I'll put it in, A-D-M-I-N, and then click on login. Now when you do this, the receiver, the, the computer will look for any wireless um, devices that are on the network. My plus net box is just up here, so it's, it, that's the most powerful, and I can click on it there. I can then click on next. And it will now ask me for the password. Now it puts in this default password of 12345678. You need to take that out. And we put in the correct password, which I happen to know. Now it is important to make sure that the password is correct, correct because there's nothing going to tell you that your password is incorrect. We're going to blur this out for the actual video because obviously I don't want you to know my password, but you must put in your password. Most internet service providers put the password on the base now of the router. So if you've got a router that's been provided any time in the last few years, then almost certainly your passphrase will be on the bottom of the router. And unless you've changed it, that's what it will be. So now I'm going to click apply. And as I said, when I click apply, if that password is wrong, it will still come up with this message. The configuration parameters have been saved successfully. Please make sure the password input is correct and turn off and reboot. Okay, so now that is saved. If I've saved an incorrect password, it will still have saved it, but obviously it won't do the next thing correctly. I'm gonna disconnect it now, as it says. That takes the power off the off the little unit and then I'm going to put it back in again just to prove that it's up and running. At the moment you can probably see there my little Skype symbol is rolling and that indicates that I've got no Skype connection because I've got I've not got this connected by my Wi-Fi. So if that is correct, cor correctly configured, which I hope it is, then in a few moments time that Skype symbol will go orange which will tell me that I'm connected. Also alongside it I've got the little indicator that's telling me that something is going on with my connection with the internet. Now not all computers are the same, you may not have these same internets, you may not even be using Skype. There's the orange light come on, I now know I can connect to the internet and to prove it I will come up here, I'll type in a random site um, I'm just gonna go to somewhere called joe.com, don't know what this is and I can already see Florida Real Estate, never been there before. So well, that's proving that this is now working because I've got that. Now the point of this device is, having got that working, and I'm gonna take it off again now, I can now transfer it to the back of my Xbox, my STB, in this case, my Triple Dragon. I can plug it in to the power lead. I can plug it in there to the um, USB. Now, my intention would be, if I, if I was recommending you do this, that you can keep these inside. It's nothing in there that's going to hurt anything. Um, this board doesn't need to be here, but you can leave it in as well if you want to. We put the lid on, that, little, that cable will be trapped in there somewhere like that. You won't see it. You can, if you want to, if you prefer, if you've got a problem with the signal, you can, you can slap it in like that. Even when you unpower a Triple Dragon, Various of these components remain hot. They, there's capacitors in here. They keep their electricity in them. They store electricity. So if I was to touch any of that now, and I'm not going to demonstrate it, if I was to touch any of that right now, the likelihood is I'd get an, a bit of a nasty shock. If I had a dicky heart, it wouldn't be good for me at all. So I'm just going to do take this in reverse. Okay, so just now we put this cable in on here. 
and I'm going to connect up the Vonet bridge that we've just um, we've just put put on. I'm going to. It could, doesn't matter. It, I would put these cables anywhere over here on the on the. Um, it, it, this isn't going to hurt being anywhere here because it's all protected in plastic. Um, this cable would normally be on your on your um, hard drive now. I've unplugged it for the moment. We can plug it back in, but if we plug that back in there just for the moment, and then I'm going to put this across here. Well, actually, let's just plug it in first. So I'm plugging it into the the, the back there. That can that can rest down there, and once and then we put our lid on, screw it on. There's plenty of room in the Triple Dragon. Now we we'll put our cable back in, our power cable back in. Now it is important to screw it back on. Um, it is important not to have the lid off with um, the power running through it because obviously um, it's a danger to you and importantly as well it's a danger to anybody else in your household. But this is a very very easy thing to do. You've seen how easy the um, Wi-Fi thing sets up itself. Now, um, the Vonet unit itself takes about 45 seconds to start up. So we're going to go to um, the... We've got no services in this machine at the moment. We're going to go to the system setup. More system setup network configuration built-in network interface at the moment that's set to disabled so we need to change that we can change it to static or we can change it as we're going to do here to DHCP once we've chosen DHCP we hit now now at the moment as you can see it's not public it's not pop populated at all we've got zeros indicating that the machine is not at all connected to my internet at the moment so I'm going to click now I get network configuration updated, I click OK again and now I need to exit and if I now count to 10 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and then press OK we can now see that the um, bridge that I've just fitted inside the Triple Dragon is talking to my router and has given me an IP address which is shown there ending in 95. Okay so that's the demonstration for that. If you've got other devices like your Xbox, if you've got Dreamboxes, if you've got the VU Duo, the original VU Duo without the Wi-Fi, um, this unit is now less than £15. Um, I supply the Triple Dragon still with the kit you've just seen fully set up, working with ch channels in it, ready to connect to the internet for less than £100.